what we're gonna cover here today is gonna to be the it's gonna be the highlights. Not I'm not gonna go too deep into deep into the details on this one because this will it will run for an hour if I if I try to do that, try to follow the entire process from start to finish into the end product. That may be some interest to you. I simply doubt that it is. If it is, uh, let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do a second one of these where I talk about what I do after I get the files onto the music onto the onto the computer. Right now, like I said, where my concern here is getting to, from record to hard drive. That's the that's the process I'm going through here, and you should I mean you should already automatically clean records automatically. You might not want to clean them to the extent that I'm about to show you, but still you have to you know you have to have you know clean your records just to make to get the best sound out of them. Recently, I bought some new records, the Isley Brothers and Patrick Simmons, Arcade. And um, I want to enjoy this music besides sitting here in, my, in the sweet spot on my stereo. I want to enjoy this in my car and on my, on my phone. So how do I get those records onto here? The process for me begins with by getting the records out, listen to them unclean, fresh out, the, out the, uh, the sleeves and everything, and find out how dirty they really are. I'm going to clean them no matter what happens, but I still like to hear them, like have a, like a before and after type of, uh, of an effect here. Records must be immaculately clean before you record them onto your onto your computer, because if you don't clean them, every pop, tick, and click will be heard loudly in the final product. Now, there's ways you could go around that, but the first way you do that is by cleaning your records, like I'm about to show you here. Welcome to my kitchen. It's very small, very modest, but it's still a kitchen. And this is where I want to clean my records at. I'm going to clean my records here in the basin that I use to wash dishes here. And the first thing I have, I have my, my, my secret ingredients of, of items here to, to do this. And after I wash this, it won't be a secret that, that much longer. First of all, um, get some gloves, some rubber gloves for use in dishwashing. Second of all, very important, is to use distilled water. You can also use bottled water too, but I think distilled water is a little bit better. Don't use tap water from the tap because it's usually very minerals are in it, dirty, it's very dirty, it has chemicals and stuff like that. You don't want to use it, put that on your records. And I have a uh, rubbing alcohol. This is 90% of rubbing alcohol. We get 90% or better for for it to, to mix with the water, mix with the water, and some very mild dishwashing soap. This is Dawn, very good stuff, but very mild dishwashing soap. And first thing you do is obviously you fill, not fill Aston, but fill the basin with with uh, with water. You'll need to fill it completely, just just a little bit there, and then you add. Just a little bit of a um, alcohol here, not too much, which is just enough. And then finally, you just add in an equal amount, or maybe one third of that amount of dishwasher soap. That's probably a little too much there, but it'll be all right. Put your gloves on. Once you're on, and just agitate the water till you get a nice foamy, get it nice and foamy and everything. And like I said, you don't need you don't need to fill up the entire basin with water just very much, not very much, not, very, not too much. But you know, distilled water is very cheap. At least here in the, United, in the states, it's very cheap. All right, now we're ready to clean some records. I have my records here. First up is this one that I bought this one about a month ago. Pat Metheny, American Garage. And I'm gonna open it up. I don't see I get my gloves on here, so and another reason I have the gloves because you have a good grip on them on the record and it won't slip out of my hands if there's too soap and everything. And and won't get my uh, fat fingers and greasy greasy thumbprints all of the all the records. So the gloves come in quite handy for that. Take my towel. Here's the record in your hand. Take my towel and I'm going to Gently. I just do this. I'm doing this over the sink, so maybe not be able to see it all completely. I'm doing a circus, slow circular motion. And then I turn over the record. And do the same thing again. Now I rinse it out over the other empty side of the, ba of, the of the basin here in the kitchen. Now, unfortunately, my the other side of the basin here. In my kitchen is full of dishes that I just washed before I started this whole project. 
So I'm going to go to, you know, it's best to directly drive vertically if you can, which but I will use the other side of the basin if, if possible. But this is where your dishwasher comes in quite handy. This is mine desk. I don't use it very often. And so the record goes inside the dishwasher. You probably saw more than four records when I in the dishwasher when I close it because when I usually clean records I usually do this in, in large clumps or in groups of ten. So that way I don't feel like I wasted a whole lot of distilled water, soap, and alcohol just on four records. So I usually do this in, in groups of ten. Be it the four new records plus six records that I might have listed recently that I think need to be cleaned again. So while the records are so while the records are drying in the dishwasher, I did pick up a new C D. Uh, Bags of Groove by Miles Davis. It's a pretty good album for what, what little I heard of it. So the Mac is working on ripping that CD to the hard drive. And again, like I said, I'm, I'm a Mac guy and I don't use iTunes to rip my CDs to the, to the library. Instead I use XLD. And XLD is a very good program. On the Windows side, I would recommend using a program that I'm sure it's still available called EAD, which stands for Ex or XAD or EAD, which stands for Exec Audio. Anyway, it's a very good program that rips CDs very, very well on the Windows side, but also it allows you to be do it more precisely than a typical ripper does. So you can you can adjust the offset and things. You can have it rip slower slower than usual instead of trying to do a, a, a speed run through a CD. It's a very good program. It's a very good program. It just has a very steep learning curve, much like XLD. As you can see, we got the records out of the dishwasher, and then we're putting them back to record on the computer. I'm using the Mac still. I'm using a program called Audacity, and it's available on both sides, Mac and Windows, and maybe even Linux by this time. I do this process for a couple of reasons. First of all, I'm doing it to archive my music. I make a, I'm, I'm meticulous about backing up my data, especially data that I consider to be extremely valuable. And my music, is, to me, is extremely valuable. It's not enough to have it sit on the shelf and be there and that and that be the end of it. I need to have a backup of my, of my music. It'll be on, let it be as Apple, um, as listening files for, for my iPods, my, my iPhone, or as flag files for uh, archiving onto a hard drive and to the cloud. I think it's important that if you have a large collection, now my collection is not that large, at least in my view is not that large, but it's extremely important to me though, that you have to have a backup because you don't know what could happen. Something has traffic could happen to you, your house could burn down, you could have a flood, anything, a lot of things could happen where that music could be lost forever. Buying for first, crying for last. Well, come on, my little lady, don't you get down. I got strong connections all over town. Just drop to a dead stop.